we're talking about what sort of ideas you're going to introduce your customer to in explaining uh, ecosystem services in their designed ecosystem while you're doing root collar excavations and aeration decompaction, topsoil, erosion control, all the things that go together as a, as a part of these TPAs. And it's very important that you understand the value of a protocol is that it is repeatable. You're going to go back to it again and again and again so that when your customer asks you, did the aeration and decompaction and the trenching and the feeding and all of the uh, reporting and the tagging and the numbering and all the things that go along with a tree preservation protocol work, you can re rely on this um, sequence that has been set in stone for 12 years. It's one of the few things in our company since we started the tree preservation part of our company in 2000 that has not changed. The Cheap to Keep uh, Trees and Landscapes Protocol shows you how a tree preservation premise can tie your newly acquired services in the more parts of the designed ecosystem than anything else you can do. It starts with the root collars. It goes then to the aeration and decompaction, each step giving you additional clues as to how you can utilize erosion control, air trenching, uh, repair of uh, irrigation heads that might be damaged and improperly watering a part of the landscape. Uh, damage to uh, any part of the system and you can get a little bit better of an invoice every time you go into the customer's yard because you're relying on this protocol. It's organic, it's natural, it's non-invasive, it's non-toxic, it's sustainable, and it is cheap to keep. We use the major superpower of a tree in order to do that, and that's the individual, the individual resource account. Trees get used to a certain environment. Once you get your trees used to this, let's maintain it, and your biggest advantage is they will get stronger as a result of it. So you use this superpower to your advantage. You're not always changing things up. You develop a plan, follow this plan using your protocol and your root collar excavations and your aeration and decompaction, your topsoiling, your biostimulants and all the rest will feed into this in a mighty way, reinforcing the health of these trees long term, creating value. We have said before that finding covered and smothered root collars and defining critical root zones is not rocket science. But once you get these areas defined and your aeration and decompaction uh, trenching begins to open up areas and your uh, root collar opens up the collar and you see these things, you're going to need to know what to do next. And the value of the 10-step protocol, which we call the Cheap to Keep Trees and Landscape Protocol, gives you that track to run on. And let's just use our current tree as an example, and we'll say that we have authenticated it. What is it? We've located it. Where is it? Is it tall enough to fall and hit the house? If it is, that puts it in a different category than the rest of the trees. We've excavated it using our root collar excavation and the air tool and now we're going to evaluate and part of that evaluation means that we're going to use aeration and decompaction to stimulate and animate the performance of this tree. And the reason I can say that is because when you do a root collar excavation here, you're also stimulating here as a treatment. And so let's understand that when they say, why are we doing this? Where are we going with this process? You can begin to refer to this protocol because when you answer those questions, you are creating and you are cooperating to create a plan.
you are deciding who the players are going to be, who's going to perform the services, when they're going to be scheduled, when the budget is going to be funded, and how much money you're going to spend to do these things to stimulate and hopefully animate and move these trees and the landscape in a direction. We'll get into acceleration when we talk about biostimulants and inoculation and some of the other processes, but I wanted you to know that these steps all involve being cheap to keep and we're discovering that the homeowner's design intent is the fifth element.